Hello everyone and welcome to the BWC Online Bible Study. My name is Amy and today we're going to be looking at um, James chapter 1. I did not have time to get on here last week and so I'm so glad to have this time to come to you today getting ready for camp and vacation Bible school. I have so many things to do and um and so I was not able to to hop on here, but I have been reading James chapter one kind of over and over again and meditating on that word. And, um, you know, I'm so glad and so thankful, though, to um, have all these things that I need to do for for camp and vacation Bible school because we didn't get to do them last year. And um, it was such a, a difficult year and a hard, you know, time of separation and isolation. And so now we're getting to get back together again. And it's so much more than that. You know, the kids spend all year long, um, all school year long, you know, learning so many things, math and science and English. There's so much that they need to know um, to just be prepared to be adults. And so I feel like summer is our opportunity to really pour into the kids because they don't have homework. They don't have all the assignments due. They don't have to get to bed quite as early. And so, um, you know, we're teaching them the word all school year long. We're, we're encouraging them on um, Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. But really during the summertime, you know, we get this opportunity to do things like go to church camp where you unplug. For an entire week, um, they don't have their phones. They um, they really get to get away from all the media and all of the advertisements that are <clears throat> vying for their attention, vying for um, their affection, vying for their um, allegiance, and um, and they really get to focus in on Jesus to to shut out all the noise. And listen for the voice of God. And so I'm always so thankful for the opportunity to, to get to take the kids to camp, for the people that will entrust me with their children um, as we go and have just like the very best time and um, and really focus in on God. You know, I was watching video from the camp that we're going to this week and just, you know, all the kids that, that surrender their hearts and their lives to God when they go to church camp. I can remember going to church camp for the first time. Um, as a youth and seeing all the kids in the altar and just being overwhelmed um, at how many teenagers there were that were um, just worshiping the Lord, that were t- that were turning their hearts to God. You know, it was more than just our little group. It was um, so many kids that were my age that were um, that were worshiping God and learning about Jesus and just having such a wonderful time doing it. You know, it's like vacation Bible school. When we open the doors to our church and we, um, we bring kids in, we, you bring your friends, you bring your neighbors, you, you have this opportunity to share Jesus and God's word. I was praying over the, um, the lesson that I would be able to bring that word to them in a way that they could understand it, that they walk away with something, um, that God wants to give them. And I pray that over you today too, as we look at this Bible study, as we look at this word, um, as we read through the Bible together, that we'll learn what it is that the Lord wants us to know, that he'll help us to apply this word that we're reading to our lives. And so what James chapter 1 is talking about is um, faith and endurance. When we go through a hard time, um, when I was reading the study notes in my fire Bible, it was talking about that that this letter that was written from James, um, you know, Paul's letters that he wrote were written to a specific church about a specific issues that that church was having. Um, this letter is kind of in general to the churches, to the believers in Christ, um, to the Jewish believers. Um, and as, as James wrote this letter, you know, he's the half brother of Jesus. This is somebody that had spent a lot of time, um, in the presence of of Jesus. And so his words are really powerful. And, um, the letter that he wrote was, um, probably written after Stephen was stoned, um, when Stephen was stoned, he was telling people about Jesus. He was telling the Pharisees about Jesus. And this was before the Apostle Paul was saved. And um, they they threw rocks at him and they killed him 
for sharing the message about Jesus because they didn't like it. And so this great persecution was what they were facing, um, what they had been through. And so um, James is helping them to really process that and and to keep their hope and their faith in the Lord, even though they had been through a difficult time. Um, so we may not make it all the way through the book of James today. We're going to start off and, and we'll just see where it takes us. But James chapter 1, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Troubles of any kind. Um, we're all going through different stuff. Whatever it is that you're going through right now, whatever troubles you may be facing, um, this is an opportunity for great joy. Um, so you have to choose to be joyful in the middle of what you're going through. You know, when we think of joy, we think of like this overwhelming, happy feeling. Um, but I feel like here it's more of a trust and a knowing that God is who he says he is, that, that we're going to grow from this and, and be stronger on the other side of it. I don't think it's an overwhelming, happy feeling. It, it's more of a strength. A strength in God, knowing that He is who He says He is. He will do the things He says He will do, and that we can hold on to Him in the middle of whatever it is that we might be going through. It says, For you know when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You know, sometimes we can fight against the fact that we are going through something. Or we can really embrace God in the middle of what we're going through. Now, of course, we're going to be praying and we're going to be believing God that he's going to help us through whatever it is that we may be going through. But in the middle of that, we have this opportunity for growth. We have this opportunity to, to hold on to God no matter what's going on, kind of like a bulldog faith. You know, when a bulldog latches onto something, you know, its jaws locked down and it won't let go. Um, so will we, in the middle of our opportunity, will we crumble and will we melt or will we lock down our jaws and will we hold on to God no matter what it is that we're going through? It says, if you need wisdom, ask your generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. For when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they are unstable in everything they do. Um in the study notes in my Bible, it says those who are not spiritually mature have not made it their purpose or their goal to become wise and mature will be unstable and easily sneered by temptations, wrong teaching, and other difficult and deceptive issues. Such people are not ready to become what God wants them to be. Now, those are just the study notes, but, um, but when you are not digging in, um, in the middle of your temptation and trial, it's going to be easy for you to um, to listen and hear the voice of the world that's trying to pull you in a different direction. And so it's so important that we hold on to Jesus, that we trust him in the middle of whatever it is we're going through. You know, the persecutions that they faced in the early church, you know, are, are so incredible and and just so um just so i'm just searching for the right word to say because it just doesn't even feel like i can find um a big enough word to explain the you know they were stoned to death for for proclaiming the name of jesus they were um beheaded and hung on crosses and and boiled in oil set on fire all the things that that happened to them you know the things that we go through the trials that we go through um, maybe of our own doing, like of our own choices, decisions that we've made that have led us down a wrong path. But we can trust God and he'll give us wisdom in the middle of whatever it is that we're going through. He cares about us. He loves us and we're precious to him. You know, the next part talks about um, 
it talks about our finances and what we really consider blessing to be. Um, it's not the way that they worded it, but but just it it's what it made me think about when I read it. It says, believers who are poor have something to boast about, for God has honored them, and those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like little flowers in the field. The hot sun rises and the grass withers and the little flower foot droops and falls. And the beauty fades away. And in the same way, the rich will fade away in all their achievements. You know, we really can't put our trust and our hope in finances. You know, we might feel like somebody who has more money than us, who has more things than us, that they're more blessed than we are. Um, you know, I was watching a show the other day and they were um, remaking these backyards and just the fabulousness that they were able to achieve and, um, you know, the money that it would take to do such a thing. You know, you would think, man, that's such a blessing. Um, and it really is. There's there's nothing wrong with having a financial blessing, but we have to remember that that is going to come and go in this life. And when we get to heaven, not one of those things is coming with us. And so our faith and our hope and our trust is not in the things that we have or the finances that we achieve, um, but in the Lord. No matter what we have or what we don't at this moment, you know, we've got a God who loves us. Jesus came to die on the cross to take away our sins. And a real blessing is that we get to have a relationship with him, that we get to have our sins taken away, that one day we will stand in the presence of a holy God because of what Jesus has done for us. And um, and while it's nice to have things you know, sometimes the things um, can be what lead to temptation that destroys. And so God knows what we need and, and he knows what we don't. And we really need to put our trust in our faith and our hope, not in um, not in the things, but in him. And um, it tells us to patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, we will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you're being tempted, don't say God is tempting me. God is never tempting you to do wrong. He never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires to entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. You know, it, it, there are so many things in this life that that would try to tempt us to to drag us and lead us away from real relationship with God um, ideas that the world has things that the world says are good um, you know it even makes me think about like because um, I'm a respiratory therapist, cigarettes, you know, a long time ago, they used to promote them like they were to like take away stress and they were going to help you. But then they found out that that was not true, that they actually lead to lung cancer and emphysema and death. And, um, and it's kind of like the apple in the garden of Eden or the fruit in the garden of Eden. It wasn't apple, but like the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you won't surely die. You know, but that's the way temptation works. That's the way the enemy works. That's the way our flesh desires. Um, you won't surely die. But when the temptation comes, we can endure because of what Jesus has done for us. Um, it says, don't be misled, my brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down from God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. And he never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to you, to us, by giving us his true word. And out of all creation, we became his prized possession. You are special and precious to God. He's not messing with you. He's not, he's not trying to see if you're strong enough to, um, to resist this temptation. You know, he tells us what he wants us to do. He shows us his love. He provides us a way out of the temptation. Um, he cares about us and he loves us. We are his prized possession. He's not casting a shifting shadow here. He, um, he shows us his love. He offers us his love. He offers us the opportunity to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior so that we can be saved, so that we can come into the presence of a holy God. And, um, 
He wants us to follow after Him. It says, listening and doing. Understand this, dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce righteousness. The righteous, it does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Humbly accept the word of God that he's planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. You know, there's so much going on in the world that we could be angry about right now. But as we just read, human anger does not produce righteousness that God desires. So we got to get rid of of the things that that God considers to be filth and evil in our lives. And we need to humbly accept the word that he's planted on the inside of us. Um, There is a righteous anger. There is a holy anger when when things do not go um, along with what the word teaches. But human anger... um, is like this rage that that can just destroy and god does not come to to steal to kill and destroy that's the enemy's job and that's what he wants to do to steal to kill and destroy he comes to bring life he comes to show love he comes to um, redeem us and and he doesn't lie to us in um attempt to lead us off in a wrong direction that's exactly what the enemy wants to do he wants to lie he wants to deceive he wants to um lead us into anxiety and depression and fear and god has not given us any of those things it says if you um It says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You will see yourself and walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself. Your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Um, it's kind of like put your money where your mouth is. Like we, we say all kinds of things, but are we willing to do what the Word teaches us to do? Are we willing to show that love? Are we willing to um, be the hands and the feet of Jesus? Are we willing to set aside what we want to do, what God wants us to do? And so that's what I want to leave you guys with today. There was so much there, um, so much to read, so much to know, but I really enjoyed that first chapter of James, and I hope you walk away with knowing that no matter what it is you're going through, um, faith is going to bring endurance. Um, you're going to get stronger in the middle of what it is you're going through that you need to listen to the word and you need to do what it says. And, um, and you're going to grow in your relationship with God when you begin to do that. And that, um, and that our faith, um, needs to really be rooted and grounded in God, in Christ, so that um, so that when the trials come, when the temptations come, um, that we are keeping our focus on Jesus. And that's what I want to leave you guys with today, James chapter 1, and I'll catch you again in James chapter 2.